Good evening, everybody, and welcome to our very first webinar in 2024. And as you can see, we don't even understand it's 2024 because we got 2023 there. So, um, but welcome. We are delighted to have you here. Um, did you know on this day on January the 10th that Thomas Paine printed a 50 page uh, pamphlet that started the American Revolution. So this is not just the American Revolution, this is your financial revolution, yay! I just also wanted to let you know that on January the 24th at 5.30, yours truly, Veronica Dangerfield, your financial cheerleader, will follow up um, Andrew's amazing presentation with um, paying off debt. So is debt seriously threatening your financial security and you want to increase your credit score and you want to improve your savings, please come back to this bad time and this bad channel two weeks from now so that we can give you the information that is going to increase your financial capacity and improve your financial health. So the debut today, the amazing Andrew Farrell, he has a refreshing energy. He is one of the smartest young men that I've ever run, went, went into. And also, he is so fun to work with. He's highly engaging. He is refreshing. You guys have a wonderful treat in front of you. So with no further ado, I am going to add, introduce the amazing, the fabulous Andrew Farrell. Come on down, Andrew. Woo! Thank you, Veronica, very much for that wonderful introduction. Yes, my name is Andrew Farrell, um, and I am here to talk to you guys about budgeting today. So budgeting is one of my favorite, favorite, favorite topics to talk about. I think it's something that anybody can benefit from having, even just like a little refresher over. Um, today, we're going to talk about not only how to create a budget, but also why budgeting. What is the reason behind why we create a budget? Um, and hopefully that can help motivate us to both create a budget, stick to a budget, maintain a budget, keep our budget fresh, um, and keep everything mindful and, you know, front of mind. So my name, as Veronica said, is Andrew Farrell. Um, I am a community engagement specialist and financial educator here at Patelco Credit Union. I've been with Patelco for about six years. I started in 2017 when I moved here from Ohio. I just needed a job and there was a teller opening at a branch out here and I thought that sounds like it could be a fun job. And it turns out it ended up becoming my career. I fell in love with credit unions in the process. I've always been a credit union banker, been a, a lifetime you know, member of credit unions but never really knew all the ins and outs for, you know, the credit union difference and why it's such a great tool for our financial health and well-being. Um, being able to help people, being able to impart knowledge, all that is stuff that I love to do within my role um, and why I'm so happy here on this webinar today. I also work in my role very closely with college students and with high school students. It's a big passion of mine to impart these financial tools when people are young so that they have those tools in their toolkit as they move forward on their life's journey. Outside of my professional role, I also double as a trivia host. I work um, a weekly trivia night at a bar here in Oakland, Mad Oak Bar and Yard. So if anyone here is in or around Oakland and is free on a Tuesday night around seven, come on out and see me. I'll make sure I stump you. Um, but it's always a good time, really just continues, you know, my passion for connection, for fostering knowledge, and most importantly, for fun. You are gonna find out by the end of this webinar, my number one passion in life is fun. I think the meaning behind life is to get as many of the good feelings as you can. Um, and so that's what I'm all about is just keeping things fun and keeping a positive perspective. I love nature. I love hiking. I love canoeing. I love camping. I was brought up doing things like that. Um, they're also financially sound activities that you can do. So if you're ever looking for some cost cutting, you know, activities, go out to one of the trails. The Bay Area has so many of them. They're so beautiful, great for your mental health. And who knows, maybe you'll stumble upon me bopping around out there. Um, so yeah, that's just a little bit about me. And I am very, very excited to be here presenting this wonderful budgeting like a boss webinar for all of you fine folks today. So I wanna start by just saying the secret 
of making progress is to get started. That is a quote by Mark Twain. And everybody, before we get started, just go ahead and give yourselves a pat on the back just for being here, for joining the webinar today. Getting started is the first step in making any progress in any area of your life. Um, whatever your reason for being here is, maybe you are completely clueless to budgeting and you just want some, you know, roadmap of how to get started. Maybe you're an avid budgeter, but you want some more tips and tricks. Whatever your reason is, whatever your, you know, hopeful takeaway from this webinar is, you showed up, you made the first step, you got started. And that deserves to give a round of applause to yourself. So congratulations for being here. I'm so happy to have you all here. And I'm so happy you all are displaying open-mindedness to new ideas, new proposals. You know, change is not just enhancing your existing practices. It's being open for new practices, new ideas. Um, and hopefully I can give you guys some cool takeaways on this webinar today. So today's focus, we're going to go in a lot of just the importance of budgeting, the why, the how. Um, our main goal is to just talk about the process of creating and maintaining a budget to reach your overall financial goals, um, whether that be saving, whether it be, you know, emergency, building an emergency savings, building a long term savings, paying off debt. Um, perhaps you, like me, sometimes fall victim to impulse purchases. I'm going to teach you guys some some tips and tricks to curbing those unnecessary purchases. Um, how you can track your income, how you can track your expenses, how you can have some strategies to reduce your debt. And overall, just put yourself in a better, more financially sound state of mind, because at the end of the day, that's going to benefit all of us. But the main thing, the main focus of today's webinar is to teach you all to get ready, be ready, and stay ready. Now, this is a slogan that you can take with you for any facet of your life, but getting ready is what you're doing here. You're here, you're on the webinar, you're starting to learn about budgeting, you are getting prepared to take on that next step in your financial journey. Being ready, once you get ready, you will then, what comes next? Be ready. And the key after that is to stay ready. You can be ready, but if you don't practice maintenance, if you don't practice staying on top of those financial goals, you're not going to stay ready. So the, 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 the key, the key takeaway, get ready. Getting ready will help you to always be ready. And if you always are ready, you will then stay ready. Again, this applies not only to budgeting, but just any, any facet of your life. You want to take that motto with you. Take it. It's yours. Get ready. Be ready. Stay ready. But alas, we are talking about budgeting today. A budget is telling your money where to go instead of wondering where it went. So budgeting is just a roadmap for your income, going towards your expenses, your goals, and of course, to fun. Budgeting should always have fun categories. You gotta have fun in your life. You only get one of them. And without a budget, money can disappear. It's like having a little magician in your pocket who takes all your money away. You don't want that magician in your pocket. You wanna have the budget. You wanna have the anti-magician. You wanna hold on to all your money and you wanna know where it goes. You can take the reins and you can be in charge of your financial path. So we are going to start with a little poll here today. I'm gonna get this popped up, do, 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 polls, launch. So I would like to know, just out of curiosity, what is everyone's current level of budgeting? Where is everybody right now at on their financial path for budgeting? Perhaps you are a very, very strict budgeter. You have your Excel spreadsheet, you've got your apps, you balance your checkbook. Maybe you look at budgets kind of as a guideline. You generally try to stick to them and it mostly works out for you. Maybe you have a budget, but you kind of have a hard time with the follow through and actually sticking with it. Or perhaps you are like I was for many, many years of my life. Budget? What budget? I don't know any budget. Who's budget? I know that life very well. Let's see. We got a lot of those. We got a lot of what budget people in there. Some loose budget as a guideline. That's that's kind of where I'm at right now, I would say. It could be a little stricter, but I have a better idea of where my money comes from and goes to challenge sticking to a written budget. So we see a lot of people in these bottom three categories here. Um, you have a loose budget, maybe you have a challenge sticking to it, maybe you don't have any kind of budget at all. Luckily, that's what I'm here for today, to help to give you some tips and tricks to fine tuning your budget, to keeping it going on the right path and keeping everybody on the, on the straight and narrow budgeting wise. So thank you all for your participation in that. I'm going to share the results with everybody here. 
We had about, looks like 36% were what budget and about 38% were loose budget as a guideline. So that's, what is that? Well, over 75% total with people who are, you know, not fully on the budgeting train. That's why you're here. <clears throat> so a budget, otherwise known as a spending plan, um, it, it helps you out with pretty much every facet of your life. And this is kind of um, the first step in creating any budget is knowing the why, right? If you want to figure out how you're going to achieve any goal you're going to set for yourself, you want to know oops, why you're setting that goal to begin with. Yeah. Um, having a budget helps you be conscious of your spending. This is something that I admittedly sometimes have a struggle with. You know, it's the Starbucks dilemma. You buy $5 at Starbucks one day, every day that adds up to, I don't know how much over the course of a year, but it's not, it's not chump change. Helps you avoid debt and stay out of debt. Um, debt is one of the biggest things that can help kind of curb your financial growth, can help eat away at your net worth, and can also help prevent saving. Um, because I don't know about you guys, but some of those credit cards out there with 30, 40 plus percent interest rates, once you have high debts on those, it is difficult to climb back out of that, that hole. Also helps you build wealth, um, long-term wealth. Um, other kind of goals that you have. It just helps you have a more sound financial cushion for yourself. Be prepared for emergencies. This is a very big one. I will again speak from personal experience. 2023 was the year from hell for me, especially for my vehicle. I got my car stolen. I went through two different windshields. My engine seized, my bumper came off. I don't know if I upset a witch in a past life and she put a curse on my poor little 2018 Hyundai Tucson, but it has been one thing after another. However, the plus side is because I had money set aside for myself in case of emergencies, granted that money went down quite a bit, but luckily I did not have to go a single dollar in debt for any of those occurrences. Um, and I was able to avoid paying those crazy interest rates, which is, whew, helps you plan for future goals, whatever those future goals may be. Having a budget in place allows you to have allocated funds for each of those goals. And last, but absolutely positively, certainly not least, spend money on once. Spend money on the fun things in life. Spend money on things that make you happy. Budgets are not there to be in place to just tell you to spend all your money on bills and savings and your retirement and boring stuff. You should have categories in your budget that go towards things that make you happy, that goes towards your wants. Um, and that's, that's a crucial part of any budget. So speaking of wants, we're going to talk about some needs versus wants. So I don't like to think of needs versus wants as two columns, right? Like this is my needs column. It's house, it's, you know, gas, it's utilities. These are my wants, it's dining out, it's going on vacation because I don't think needs and wants are quite as black and white like that. And I also think that needs and wants vary depending on the person. Um, some things are human necessity needs and that's kind of the stuff that's on the bottom of the pyramid here. That's your food, shelter, clothing, water, stuff to keep you alive. Um, other things are more psychological or you know, mental health needs. So as you see on this lovely little pyramid here, we start at the bottom. Those are the basic fundamental human needs, stuff that keeps you, you know, breathing, keeps your heart pumping. Right above that, we have um, more societal needs, like your communication, your phone bill, being able to reach out to your family and your boss. Um, also transportation, being able to get to work, being able to get from point A to point B. These are things that are also needs um, in, a, in order to you know, function properly as a contributing member of this here society. Right above that, I put hobbies and creative passions kind of right in the middle there. I think these are all things that are very, very key to our mental health. Um, so for me personally, you may hear me say something like, oh, I need a new pair of hiking boots because I go hiking a lot. Do I need those hiking boots in the same way that I need water and shelter? Probably not, right? But do I need those hiking boots in order to fulfill that psychological need for me? I absolutely do. Hiking helps me, you know, stay physically in shape. It helps me with my mental clarity, helps me with my mental health. Um, it's a really big hobby and a big passion of mine. So I would say that those hiking boots are a justifiable need. Um, above that, entertainment, eating out, vacations, the fun stuff. How many of you guys have had 
I don't know, a stressful couple months at work, your life has been really busy, things have been really stressful and really chaotic, and you say, oh, God, I need a vacation, right? We've all said that before. Again, do we need that vacation in the same way that we need a roof over our head? Not so much, but in that stage of our life, having a vacation is still something that would help our overall mental clarity. So you budget for it, you fit it in your budget, and you make it worse, you make it work. Um, at the top, we've got the dreaded impulse buys. So let's say you are browsing around at Target and you see something that catches your eye. You're not going to say, oh, I need this $80 panini press that I just stumbled upon that I had no ex idea existed five minutes ago. It's not the same thing. You know, you have to weigh all of your needs and wants differently, and they all look different for different people. So, you know, perhaps your hobbies and, and things that fuel your mental health are going out to eat, are going to the movies. If that's the case, cool. Bop it down the pyramid a little bit um, and make sure you allocate money in your budget for those things that truly fuel you, fuel you um, and, and fuel your energy and your spirit. However, those impulse purchases now. I myself have fallen victim to many an impulse purchase. But when I look at this statistic, huh, man, did it put things into perspective. Average American spends $314 a month on impulse buys, which equates to $3,768 a year on impulse buys, which equates to, oh my goodness, $226,080 in your lifetime, just on random frivolous things that you stumbled upon and decided to buy. Are those numbers not astronomical? I look at $314 a month, you know, that's my car note right there. I could pay off my car by just not making impulse purchases. $37, $68 a year, I could go on a European vacation with that amount of money. $200,000 plus, I could live off that for a couple years. I could take a couple years sabbatical. You guys wouldn't see me. I'd be off on a yacht somewhere in the Bahamas. Who knows where I'd be? But these are all things that you can get just by curbing those impulse purchases. Now, what's really, really interesting, two out of three impulse buys happen in bed on a phone. How many of you guys scrolling, stumble upon an ad on Instagram or on social media and think, oh, cool, add it to cart and buy it just right there? That'll get you with impulse purchases. So some ways to curb impulse buying. Number one, question yourself. Ask yourself when you see something, do I really need this? Is it fulfilling a need? Will I be adversely affected if I don't get it? Is it something that will help me out long-term? I can't tell you how many things I bought when I was younger that I see, it looks cool, I buy it, it shows up, I use it twice, I put it in a closet, that's the end of the story for that item. That's not a wise use of my money. Also listen to your gut. If there is something telling you, I don't know if I should buy this right now, I don't know if this is a wise decision. That is your gut telling you, put the item back on the shelf. Listen to it. It will always be there. If you do decide down the road that it's something that you might wanna pick up, you can always go back and get it. But do you always need it in that exact moment that you see it? Probably not. Beware of scrolling. So again, two out of three impulse buys happen in your bed on a phone. For this, I say unsubscribe and unfollow. Maybe you joined a Bath and Body Works mailing list and you get those emails and they say, we have a three for one candle sale. We have a soap sale. We've got a lotion sale. Beware of sales in general because sales, that's how they get you. Oh yeah, that's how they get you is the sales. But if you're getting those emails that are advertising all those products and helping to you know, fuel your desire to impulse purchase, unsubscribe. If you're following accounts that are advertising products to you that you know you don't need but are a temptation to you, unfollow. Know what your triggers are. If your triggers are seeing things advertised through these stores that you follow, make sure you're able to kind of circumnavigate those triggers. Stop the comparisons. No one's financial journey is the same. Just because somebody has a lot of nice things doesn't mean they're necessarily doing all that well financially. I know plenty of people who have, you know, decked out cars, the nicest things, and uh, it, it can go in a lot of debt for that. Veronica. Yeah, we had um, a, a great chat. She said, think about what the packaging um, does to the earth and pollution. So that would be another great consideration on um, curbing your spending on impulse buys. Absolutely. It's Especially awesome. if... If someone's a big like Amazon buyer, if you buy three or four things on Amazon and they all come in different packages, you know, think about what that's doing to your carbon footprint. 
it's, uh, it's another way to kind of be mindful about your spending. And last, practice the 30-day rule. This 30-day rule was a game changer for me. So circling back to kind of the scrolling or the browsing, if you see something that catches your eye and you're like, oh, I really want that. I really want that panini press. Add it to your cart, you know, save the link. If you're out in the store, maybe take a picture of the item, um, but do not make the purchase for 30 days. This will help you for a couple of reasons. Number one, nine times out of 10, you are gonna find out by day two or three, you are no longer even thinking of the item. It's completely out of sight, out of mind. And, and that's all she wrote. It'll also help you develop patience, which will make curbing impulse purchases in the future a lot easier. And it also gives you time to research. So maybe you do see that panini press. Maybe it costs a hundred bucks. You think I want a panini press. I should buy this right now. Don't do it. Wait the 30 days. If you find out in, you know, a week or two, you still want the panini press, start searching around. See if you can find one that's maybe cheaper, one that is of the same cost, but maybe offers more features. Um, and that way, not only are you getting your panini press that now you've waited 30 days for and you've adequately decided that you do want, but you are making sure that you are buying the best version at the best rate instead of just the first one you found. Too many people spend money they haven't earned to buy things they don't want to impress people they don't like. Will Rogers, American performer and comedian of the vaudeville era said this quote, and it could not ring any more true. Is it really that important to buy things that are not necessarily all that necessary for your financial health and well-being or your personal health and well-being just for status or just to impress people that you don't really know? Another thing to consider when you are going to make a large impulse purchase um, or a large purchase that maybe your gut is telling you, hold on a second, let's rethink this. Um, ask yourself if you're doing it to impress anybody, if you're doing it just for the sake of status, just for the sake of, you know, having this nice name brand thing, um, you know, Stanley Cup, whatever it may be that's going on right now. Uh, just, just understand that you need to do what is best for yourself. Um, and not what is best for other people's perceptions of you. Because at the end of the day, they're not signing your checks. They're not paying your bills. So their opinion of what you have, it doesn't really matter. All right. The moment you've all been waiting for, we're going to talk about creating a budget. Some strategies and some tactics on how to create a budget and how to put that into place. Pay yourself first. This is a sentence that should stick with everybody, but I'm gonna to explain to you guys what it actually means. Because when I first heard pay yourself first, I thought, well, yeah, duh, that's what I do. I get my paycheck, I take my money and I spend it on things I want. I'm paying myself first. But what pay yourself first really means is to pay your future self before you pay your current self. Because there's always gonna be money in your budget for your current self. There's always gonna be money set aside for fun, for activities, for hobbies, for things that are going to fuel your current self and you know your current energy and, and your current passions. However, if all of your money goes to your current self and you are not paying your future self first, one day, spoiler alert, your future self is going to be your current self. And then if you don't have any money, when your future self is your current self, your then current self is not going to be too happy with your past self. I don't know if that made sense. I'm not the best with, you know, time loops and quantum physics and whatnot, but you get what I'm trying to say. Pay your future self so that you can allocate funds down the road and, uh, and, you'll, and you'll, be, you'll be much more grateful to your present day current self once you do so. So this is the pay yourself first budget, and this is the budget model that I follow. Very simple, few short steps. Number one, calculate your net income within your budgeting cycle. So typically a budgeting cycle is going to be once a month. That's typically when your bills come out, when your rent or your mortgage comes out. Calculate your total net income for that monthly budgeting cycle. Um, be sure to add in everything. So on top of just your regular salary, um, any other kind of income that you get, dividends, interest, child support, alimony, maybe you've got a side hustle, maybe you host trivia every Tuesday, I don't know. Whatever net income that you have, include that in your total net for the month. 
Now you know what your income is. You're going to want to track your expenses and figure out what is spent on needs. Now, do not conflate bills with needs. I have a hard time doing this. I think, well, Hulu comes out automatically on the fifth of every month. So that's one of my bills. I should subtract that from my needs. It's not necessarily a need. You want to figure out what exactly comes out based on just, you know, your gas, your utilities, um, your mortgage, your rent, things like that. Um, and subtract that from your income. So we'll say you make $4,000 a month as your net total income and all of your needs come to $2,000 a month. You subtract that, your extra disposable income is now set at $2,000 a month. Now here is where you're going to pay yourself first. This is where you're gonna deduct your funds for your savings, for your investing, whatever kind of savings goals you have, you're gonna take care of those before you have the extra money for yourself. Savings can look like anything from creating an emergency savings for yourself. It can be having a vacation savings. As you see on my little chart here, I always make a little bucket for vacation because I like to travel. Um, it can even be paying off debt. A lot of times people think that uh, debt payment doesn't really count as savings because you're not actually seeing your savings account balance go up, but you are increasing your net worth you are increasing your debt to income ratio and you're saving a lot of money paying on interest. So paying down debt is a huge, huge part of savings and that's where it comes into play right here. So now you've done all that, let's say you wanna put $500 a month to emergency savings, $200 a month to your vacation savings and $200 a month to paying off debt. That comes to 900, you had 2000 in discretionary income, take out the 900 for your savings goals, that extra $1,100, that is your money. Go crazy. Go to Barbados. Buy the Panini Press. Do what you want. Have fun with your leftover money um, and make sure that you are doing it mindfully and responsibly because you know that your bills are paid, your needs are met, um, and all your savings goals are taken care of. You're, you're paying yourself first. You can splurge on that money guilt-free. And that for me is my why. When I think of the reason, like when I ask myself, why do I budget? I budget because I wanna have fun with my money. And I wanna have fun with my money, not at the expense of my future self. So I make sure my future self is taken care of. I make sure my needs are taken care of. So that way I can have as much fun with the money that I have left over with as little stress as possible. For me personally, that's my why. Now, emergency savings is a big, big deal though. And I will say this, according to a bank rate annual emergency funds report, 57% of Americans claim they have less than $1,000 set away for an emergency. That is a scary statistic considering that emergencies do happen. And when emergencies happen, these people also um, often have to resort to high interest debt to cover their emergencies, um, which then becomes a cycle because you now have to pay off the loan which comes with interest, which can you know ultimately put you in a cycle of debt. So prioritizing emergency savings is one big takeaway, I would say as well. It's one of the biggest things you can do to keep you out of a debt cycle and can help you build wealth. Um, an easy way to do this is to automate your savings. Veronica, yes. I just, just a quick um, question. Um, uh, someone asked, is, is food, an expense, food expense a need? I would say food expense is a need. I mean, groceries are a need. You have to eat. Um, so being able to, to go to the grocery store and feed yourself is a need. Um, in a little bit, I'm actually going to talk about some, some cool creative ways to kind of cut down on grocery spending. So if that's something that you're maybe going over with, um, we, can, we can look at some tips and tricks there. Now, food as such a broad umbrella like that, like I don't want anybody out here saying, oh, Andrew told me food is a need. So let's go to P.F. Chang's every night. Woo! Like that's not that's not the takeaway. Um, you do have to eat, but you also have to, you know, fit the food within your budget. Unless you want to go to P.F. Chang's every night with your extra discretionary income, in which case I'm not going to yuck your yum. Do what you want to do, um, but make sure you're budgeting first. And, uh, and as I was saying, yes, automating your savings. Automating your savings is the number one easiest way to save. Um, Patelco actually has an account called our Plus Checking account. Um, it's, it's got tons of features. 
uh, easy shield, dark web monitoring, discounts at stores in the area. It's got cell phone protection. It's got roadside assistance. Um, but one of the best features it has is it's an automatic roundup savings. So let's say you swipe your debit card for like $5.50. It'll automatically put that extra 50 cents in the savings account, round the purchase in your checking account up to $6. Um, and not only that, but Patelco does a 10% match for every roundup as well. So it's a great way to save without even thinking about it. Um, you can also create a secondary savings account and just tell your employer like, hey, I want to put 10% of my paycheck in this savings account or $100 or whatever it is. Um, emergency savings, because it is so important and because so few people have enough of a safety net to really help them in any kind of emergency, uh, I, I would definitely recommend automating those savings because then it happens. You don't have to think about it. And at the end of the day, when things come up, when your car gets stolen, when your windshield cracks, when your engine seizes on the highway, I'm speaking, of course, from personal experience, um, you will have the money set aside to do, you know, what needs to be done. All right, so another budgeting strategy is the 50, 30, 20 budget. And this is a really good way to make sure that you are kind of living within your means. Um, so typically what this is saying is that of your needs, and that is, you know, rent, mortgage, utilities, groceries, gas, car insurance, the things like that, all that together should come to um, about 50% of your overall income. So when we look at the previous example, $4,000 is your net total income, 2,000 went to needs. This fits right in that budget perfectly. Um, but this is also a key that I would look at if you are ever looking to maybe move or buy a new car, um, make sure that it fits within these kind of guidelines here. So if you're paying, I don't know, $800 in rent right now, you're splitting your place um, and you decide to move out on your own, get a new place where your rent is gonna go up pretty substantially. Factor it in, factor that new rent amount if you're gonna buy a new car, factor in what that new car payment would be um, and make sure that all fits within 50%. If you add those new expenses and you realize that puts you up to like 60, 70%, um, maybe it might be time to, to cut back on some of those unnecessary living expenses. 20% should go to saving. This is your savings goals, your debt repayment, um, your investments, your retirement savings. So we'll use that net $4,000 a month again. That would be about $800 going to savings, um, which is you know a pretty significant amount to put in your savings account between your emergency savings, paying off debt, saving for a vacation. Um, you can do a lot with $800 a month. And then of course, my favorite category once, Veronica. Um, there's lots of questions about where the student loans are saving for your children's college fund is coming so, in. So student loans, I would consider to be a need. That's that's something that you have to pay off. Um, it's going to follow you around. So there are many, many, you know, categories and ways that you can get those payments reduced. We actually have a podcast on it on our podcast, Small Talks for Big Change. It's about student loans and ways that you can kind of cut those payments down. Um, but that is a, a payment. That's a bill. Um, and it's something that you can't just not pay without having it adversely affect your life. Um, so I would put that in the needs category. As far as college savings, um, that would be in the savings category. Now, again, if you have more aggressive savings goals, you can up these numbers. This is just a loose guideline, um, but it's more so about creating those goals for yourself, whatever those savings end marks are, um, and, and fixing whatever number is to reach that goal within your budget um, to make it work. So if you want to have a certain dollar amount saved in 10, 15 years, um, you got to find out how much you have to save for that. Um, automate that savings, and then just, you know, watch it grow and stick to it. Thank you, dear. Of course. Thank you, Veronica. Um, and then last but not least, of course, my favorite category, the once. These are the streaming services, the dining out, the hobbies, the miscellaneous shopping. Um, even this, this, you know, 50, 30, 20 budget, this actively, you know, financially approved budget structure still leaves room for once. Um, and it's a pretty decent amount. So again, big takeaway here, fun, once, exciting things should be a part of any budget. Don't deprive yourself. Um, just make sure that you are doing it responsibly. And then the zero-based budget. This is a budget that a lot of businesses use um, because it accounts for every single dollar. It can also be used for personal budgets, though, for an experienced budgeter or for someone who just really needs to closely monitor their spending. Um, basically, you just start at zero dollars 
and then you work your way right back to zero dollars. You have to justify every dollar spent for every budgeting period. So in March, if you make $3,982, you start at zero, put the $3,982 in there, allocate every single dollar. This amount's going here, this amount's going here, this amount's going here until you get back down to zero. Um, the next budgeting cycle, you make $4,112. Again, you start fresh, every budgeting cycle, justify every single dollar. Businesses do this because, of course, businesses can't just have like random dollars floating around and no one knows where they went. Um, but if you are a very, very seasoned budgeter or you really, really, really want to pay attention to where every dollar of your money is going, this is a way to do that. Get your, get your you know, amount every paycheck every month and just map out every single dollar. You will always stay on top of your finances that way. Now, maybe you are saying, Andrew, I hear you. I hear what you're saying. That's all fine and good, but I don't wanna. I don't like budgeting. I don't like spreadsheets. I don't like data tracking. I don't like itemizations. To that, I say, fair. Budget to some people can be a trigger word. Um, it, it sometimes has a negative connotation to it. So I like to think of a budget more, like I said earlier, a spending plan or like a roadmap for your money. Um, and if, if that sounds like something that's good for you, the anti-budget might be the course for you. Me personally, with my type A brain, I love spreadsheets. I love lists. I love all that good stuff. Um, but I understand that no two people are the same. And if that's not your cup of tea, the anti-budget is so easy, even this lovely caveman here could do it. So the idea behind the anti-budget is that you pay your savings, you pay your bills, and you use whatever is left over any way you want, which is basically what all these budgeting structures fall into, but this just makes it very plain and simple like that. So you calculate your monthly income, your bills, and your savings. And you're gonna choose a savings rate with this. So it kind of starts off by just monitoring what you have, seeing what you come in um, and saying, okay, I spend about you know this amount on my needs. I wanna save about two or $300 a month. Um, and I spend about this a month on you know my personal loans, my, my debt repayment, uh, my student loans, whatever it may be. Whatever that dollar amount is, that's your savings rate. So maybe it ends up being about 60% of your total income, 60 or 70%. Calculate that, put it in an account by itself, have your direct deposit split up, have the amount that has savings, bills, all that just go into one bucket. Then you're just going to pull that directly every month, auto pay everything, your savings will be taken care of, your bills will be taken care of, your goals will be taken care of, everything else that you have left over, you live off of. So with this, you basically just kind of set it up one time, put it all in one account and let the auto pays all do the work from there. You pay your savings, you pay your bills, you spend the rest. That's all there is to it. There's no categories, there's no restrictions, there's no itemizing, no list, no spreadsheets, none of that. It's simple, it's clockwork. One last takeaway here for creating a budget is, remember to reevaluate your budget periodically. Life, it ebbs and flows, it's always changing. Income is always changing, circumstances are always changing. Um, and being adaptable to change is the key to growth, both in your personal life, in your professional life, and in your financial life. A lot of budgets fail because they are not reevaluated when these life changes occur. Um, so maybe you have a set budget and then you get a new job, you have a new addition to the family, you move to a new place, that old budget doesn't work for you anymore. And so instead of you know sitting down and reevaluating everything, the budget just falls off. A lot of experts suggest an annual reevaluation of your budget is a really good way to go, or if you have any major career or life change. So you have a new job that maybe pays you a little bit more. Um, maybe you had a child, a new addition to the family. Maybe you relocated and your monthly expenses have gone up or down. Anytime there's a major change in your financial situation, sit down and reevaluate your budget. Look at your needs and wants. Look at where your money is going once it comes in. Recalculate your total income. Re rework the, the roadmap as needed. Um, and if there are no major life changes, you know, that could be a New Year's resolution for everybody. Once a year, just sit down, reevaluate things, make sure your current budget plan, whatever it may be, whatever works best for you, is still the way to go um, and make any tweaks as necessary. That is how you, what? Stay ready. Woo! We got ready. We were ready. We stay ready. Veronica. 
got a couple of questions. Yeah. One is, um, can you, um, do you have any suggestions on a budget where there's, in, the income is inconsistent or unpredictable? If the income is inconsistent or unpredictable, then paying yourself first is really going to be your, um, your, your, your best friend. Um, because unfortunately, when your income is inconsistent, you kind of have to make the income consistent yourself. Um, I see a lot of people that happens a lot with like contracting work or things There are busy seasons and there are, you know, slower seasons. Um, Again, take data if that's your thing. If, if you want to look at a data for a year, see, I made this much in, you know, March, April, May, June, and then significantly less in July, August, September, October. All right, then I should allocate however much I have in these months where I made a lot more into these months where it's a little bit slower. Um, you can put money in a savings account that you can't see or you can't touch and can pull from it during those, those slower months. Um, but inconsistency, unfortunately, is, you know, a reality for a lot of people's jobs, um, but consistency really is the key. So if your payments that are coming in are inconsistent, you then got to make them consistent. Um, and that just comes with looking at your income, tracking it all and, and dispersing it throughout the year as you, as you would. And also having a bare bones budget where exactly. no matter what, this budget is something you can use regardless of whether your income, because it's the bare bones and everybody needs a bare bone budget because Absolutely. life is like you said, changing and inconsistent. So the other one is, do you recommend um, any budgeting apps? Andrew? I do recommend some budgeting apps. I'm going to hold that question for one quick okay. second because I'm going to talk about some later and talk about the different ones. Um, there are a, three or four that I really like um, and I can talk about how they kind of differ um, and you can maybe make a decision for which one works best for, for what you want. Thank you. Absolutely. You become what you give your attention to. Epictetus, wonderful Greek philosopher, said this, and he said this way back in the BC time. So if this was being said back then and it's still applicable right now, you know that this is a very, very good nugget. And this is a little nugget you can take with you and apply to any aspect of your life. A lot of these tidbits are. Um, if you say, I want to run a marathon, and you pay attention to your training and your preparation and your diet, guess what? you're going to become a marathon runner. Um, anything is within your reach if you consciously make the effort to give it the necessary attention. So if you consciously make the effort to give budgeting your attention, you will become a budgeter. Um, and this is actually a very appropriate quote for the question that we just had. If, if payment's inconsistent, um, if what you get is not quite as black and white as what we're talking about, um, just pay very close attention to your income and to your expenses. Um, and you can, you can build wealth and avoid debt and do all these great things with the best of them. All right, let's talk a little bit about tracking income and expenses. Um, benefits of this, it's going to sharpen your awareness. You're going to uncover spending issues, prevent budget overflow categories. It'll motivate some behavior to cut back on overspending some things. Um, staying on top of your income and expenses is very, very important. This is where I'm going to talk about some of those apps here in a second. Um, but first, let's talk about the different types of expenses. So we've got fixed expenses. Um, these are the set costs that come out set day, set month. These are your things like your mortgage, your rent, um, the amount that you put towards savings, your car note, your car insurance, um, you know, phone cable, those bills that come out once a month and they're the set amount. Those are fixed expenses. Variable are the ones that fluctuate every month. So these are clothing, entertainment, um, gas. Maybe you have a busy driving month and then a slower driving month. Uh, groceries can also vary. So these are the expenses that are not always going to be the same dollar amount and on the same day every month. Um, while these expenses are different, my recommendation for how to handle them is pretty much the same. And I would say open separate checking accounts and just auto pay everything. You can have as many checking accounts, as many savings accounts as you want. If you look at my Patelco account, I've got a savings account for emergency. I've got a savings account for vacation. I've got a bills checking account. I've got a, a fixed bills and a variable bills. I've got my direct deposit checking. You know, if that helps you to keep things categorized in different ways, go off. Um, I would say to open a separate checking account for fixed is I'll show you mine right here real quick. I've got a little notes app. I have all my bills per pay period, what they are. I get paid one day. I put that amount in that checking account. That is my total fixed expenses that come out in that pay period. I set it to auto pay on that one. 
I don't think about it. Um, for my variable expenses, I do the same thing, but what I do there is I overestimate. So if I spend, you know, anywhere from 200 to $300 a month on gas, I'll up it to 350. And I put that in that account. Um, same with, you know, groceries with personal care. I put the variable expenses in another checking account and pay for those with that card as it comes out. Um, now, because I've overestimated at the end of that month, I typically have a little bit left over. And with that money, you can do what you want with it. When I had money in my emergency savings account, I was using that money to go and have fun. And that was more, you know, once money. Um, once I had to dip into my emergency account, however, I started putting that extra money back into my savings to rebuild that. But it's just another way to have a little bit of extra money um, and to stay on top of all of the expenses that you have. Now, tracking your spending. These are the apps. So there are lots of ways that you can track your spending, but the number one thing I'm going to say is do what works for you and do what works for your life. So if you are not a tech savvy person, don't force yourself to be a tech savvy person. It'll only cause frustration and it will keep it harder to maintain the budget. My, my dad, um, who may or may not be here, I think he was going to hop on if you are. Hello, dad. Um, he he's a he's a check register guy. Um, I think he started to warm up a little bit to the idea of online banking. Um, but when I was first learning personal finance from my dad, he, he had his check register out. He said, you write down the transaction, you write down the date, you subtract it, you keep that running total. Um, and he is one of the most financially sound people that I know. And paper works for him. Paper statements, checking your transactions that way, that works for people. If that's your jam, go for it. Electronic, that's online banking. Patelco has a really great online banking app, as I'm sure most of you know. It's a great way to stay on top of your spending and your finances that way. Some budgeting apps. So my absolute favorite budgeting app ah, was Mint, and Mint went away this year. But we have some extra ones. So Pocket Guard works kind of like how Mint works. Um, it categorizes your purchases for you. So you link your account. Um, when purchases come in, it says, okay, you spent this amount in, you know, groceries, this amount in entertaining, this amount on dining out. Um, and it categorizes everything, keeps everything in lists. You can set goals for how much you want to spend for each. So if you say like, I don't want to spend more than $300 a month on dining out, you put that in the app. Once you start getting close to that, the app is going to tell you, hey, you're going a little over and we don't want that. So it kind of helps hold you accountable in that way. Um, and it's it's free to use. Pocket Guard is free. I think Pocket Guard Plus costs a little bit, but the standard app um, is totally free. YNAB is you need a budget. Um, we talked about that zero-based budgeting system. This is the zero-based budgeting app. So if that's something that appeals to you to allocate for every single dollar, this is the app for you. Um, but it, it does make you do it. So there's no, you know, there's no funny business. You got to account for everything. Now, every dollar is really good if you are a little skeptical about linking your own financial, you know, institution to the app. I totally understand that. Um, you know, if, if that's something that you're not comfortable with, every dollar is kind of works like Pocket Guard does, but you don't actually link your bank account to it. You just input everything manually. Um, and then Patelco. On our online banking, we also have a really cool budgeting tool. I'll show you a screenshot of it here in a second. Um, but we have budgeting apps as well that categorize your purchase, gives you little graphs for how much you spend in each category. Um, and you can set savings goals and, and budgeting limits and transaction alerts and anything that you need to stay on top of your budget. Last but not least, spreadsheets. So maybe you're, you know, not so old school that you use a check register, but you're not really into the app game either. Spreadsheets are great. They have lots of customization. You can always go in and edit your categories just right there on your computer. Um, Michelle, who is here today, she is the manager of our membership development department. She uses an Excel spreadsheet for her budget and she swears by it. It works very well for her. And she's always out watching the Warriors and having a good time. And I know she can afford it because she uses that Excel spreadsheet. Um, so try to different things. Don't be afraid to experiment. Don't be afraid to try, you know, try an app. If you don't like it, you can always cancel. Try to play around with the budgeting tools on Patelco. Maybe try to open up a Google Doc or an Excel spreadsheet and see if that works for you. Um, you know, stay flexible, try different options, um, and, uh, and do what's best for you. Also, track your progress. 
If you track your progress, you know that you're staying on top of your stuff. You can review your progress monthly um, at the end of every month. If you look at your statement, if you look at your online banking, whatever you're doing to track your expenses, um, just review it and make sure that, you know, whatever budget you set for yourself that month, you actually stuck to that month. Um, and, and analyze any categories that maybe you did go a little over on um, and, and adjust your behavior as necessary which goes right into my next arrow. How about that? Adjust your plan as necessary. Um, if you see that there are areas that's going over, maybe you earn more money, maybe things happen in your life, um, always make sure that you can keep your plan fluid. Budgets should be fluid. They should not be set in stone. They're not carved in a rock. It's not, you know, laminated and framed on your wall. You can always tweak things um, and you should do so as needed. Hold yourself accountable. So there's lots of different ways you can do this. Like I said, on the apps, sometimes you can set alerts so that if you're going over, it'll alert you that way. That's one way to hold yourself accountable. Um, you can keep a journal. I keep a journal for myself. It's not really a journal. It's a, another note in my notes app. I swear I have notes till the cows come home on my iPhone, but that's one way to do it. Um, having an accountability partner, if you have a friend who's maybe also struggling with sticking to a budget or wants to learn how to create and maintain one, Join forces, become budgeting buddies. Hey, I just thought of that. I like that. Budgeting buddies. Um, and then you guys can both hold each other accountable. Maybe, you know, meet for coffee once a month. Make sure you guys are all doing things well. Set incentives for yourself um, and make it a fun thing. And last, because you know I'm the fun guy. I like to have fun. Celebrate every goal reached. And I mean every goal reached. If you set a goal for yourself, no matter how big or how small, if your goal is just, I want to say $500, you create that goal and then you do the steps and you achieve that goal, that is fantastic. That is wonderful. You should give yourself an applause and you should celebrate that goal because you manifested something. You set a goal for yourself and you achieved it and you want to celebrate that because if you celebrate those victories, you will then make more goals. You will continue to celebrate those and you will keep that positive reinforcement going. And that at the end of the day is really how we grow and how we, you know, do these good things and also maintain a positive and happy perspective and outlook in the process. Some mindfulness when spending. So again, number one, know your why. For me, it's having fun, being able to have fun and spend my money without you know, going in the hole. Um, if you're ever struggling with your budget, if you're getting bored with budgeting, um, if you're feeling the urge to impulse buy, once the, the novelty runs off, we get out of this webinar and you guys are like, yeah, let's budget. And then in two or three weeks, you know, the shininess of it is gone. Just remember your why. Remember why you are budgeting, whether it be to pay off debt, whether it be to um, make your, your inconsistencies in your payments, more consistent, whether it be to have money to have fun, whatever your why is, figure out your why and keep your why front of mind. Write it on a post-it on your fridge, do whatever you got to do to keep that fresh. Know what makes you impulse buy, know your triggers. Are you an emotional spender? Are you a doom scroller? scroller? Um, do you go shopping as a hobby? Are you keen to peer pressure? How many of you guys, when you go shopping with a friend, it's always like, you know, ooh, those sunglasses look great. You should buy those. You should buy those. Yeah. Oh, that shirt looks great on you. You got to buy it. You got to buy it. You got to buy it. You know, whatever your trigger is, whatever helps you fall into those pitfalls, As once you know what they are, it'll be much easier to combat them. Number three, learn to budget. This is why we're all here. We're all here to learn how to budget. We're all here to get some kind of takeaway. Um, start small. Start with just, you know, putting some money in savings, automating your savings and automating your bills, and then grow from there. Um, but once you learn how to budget and once you prioritize budgeting and once you make it something that you pay attention to, you will become that thing. Thank you, Epictetus. Big shout out to Epictetus. Woo. And last but not least, automate your bills. Um, if, if you automate everything, it's just going to happen like clockwork. Uh, keeping the money allocated for your bills separate as well will really help um, making your payments on time easy. It'll help you cover your bills and make sure that you pay yourself. Um, it'll help your savings grow. Automating everything has been my best friend. There is no way every month I am going in and transferring money over. Um, so keeping everything automated helps out quite a bit. Supplementing income with debt. There is one point 
three, $1.03 trillion in credit card debt and about $6,000 per person in the United States. That is an insane number. So if you're somebody who is struggling a little bit with credit card debt, um, work towards paying off the balance in full in a way that fits into your budget. So if you just make the minimum payment, a lot of times those interest charges are going to be more than just what the payment was, uh, and it's going to keep you in that cycle. So if you can afford to pay aggressively, do that. If you can just pay what you can a little bit over the minimum and then not add any more charges on the card, do that. Do whatever you can within your budget to get that paid off. Um, Patelco offers a lot of great debt consolidation options as well, but the, the biggest threat to your net worth is high interest debt. Yes, Veronica. And with that, don't forget, in two weeks, we're going to have a um, paying off debt webinar, mm -hmm. and we would love to see you all come for more refreshing ideas. Absolutely. That's going to be January 24th with our lovely Miss Veronica Dangerfield. I will also be there as well, chiming in in the background like I do. We're a team now. <laughs> we are a team now. All right. So a couple of quick ways to reduce debt. Um, number one, cancel unnecessary services. If you go through your expenses and you're saying like, oh, I did a, a free trial for Peacock that I forgot to cancel, or I had a free trial for, you know, a Showtime add-on on Amazon that I forgot to cancel. Cancel anything you're not using. Those small purchases can always add up. Um, cutting down on grocery spending. So when we're talking about food, check your pantry before you shop. Figure out what you already have in there, what meals you can plan around. Um, make a menu off what you already have. Make a grocery list and just stick to that. Um, a lot of times if you go through your pantry right now, you'll find that you have noodles, you've got frozen chicken, you've got plenty of stuff to, to serve yourself for a week. So work off what you actually have, make a menu and continue doing it. Reducing your energy costs. If you unplug your devices when they're not in use, you can save up to $200 a year. If you reduce your thermostat just seven to 10 degrees for eight hours a day, so maybe while you sleep, you can save 10% a year of your total energy bill. And if you reduce your thermostat just two degrees, you save about $5 a month or about $60 a year. Add that up, we've got four or $500. That's a weekend trip to Tahoe right there. And all you had to do was put a sweater on in the cold months. Um, and last but not least, find some fun, free things to do. Game nights, movie marathons with your friends, bring people over and have some fun at home. Go out on a hike. I always suggest also be a tourist in your own city. I love to go around in San Francisco and just hang out at the Golden Gate Bridge, hang out at Golden Gate Park. One of my favorite things to do was walk down the Embarcadero and watch the, the sea lions. I could watch those sea lions all day if you let me, um, you know, hang around the ferry building. There are so many fun things to do in your own backyard that you may not even think about. Um, and so, yeah, definitely, definitely find those fun free things to do. We are just about at time, so I'm going to breeze through these last couple slides here, but we are in the very home stretch. Just a couple takeaways here. Number one, check your account history regularly. Stay on top of your spending. This will also help you curb those frequent five, three dollar purchases, because when you actually see them all laid out and see how much you spend on those, it might motivate you to cut back on the Starbucks every now and again. Use different accounts for different purposes, such as savings, bills, fun, keep them all in different buckets. Um, and this way you can tend to all of your goals and your gardens respectively, whether it be savings, debt paying off, um, you know, whatever, whatever the case may be. Do not compare your financial situation to anyone else's. You want to do what's right with your goals and your life and not their goals and their life. Because at the end of the day, their situation is vastly different from your situation. And remember that if you are not budgeting, you are losing money. We don't want that magician in our pocket taking our money away. So keep the budget. Keep the reins of your own financial life. You are the author of the roadmap. You are the author of your own financial path. And if you're not budgeting you're given the reins to the magician and he's a bad guy. So I wanna leave on one quote here. Budget is more than just a series of numbers on a page. It is an embodiment of our values. Former President Barack Obama said that budget helps prioritize your goals, your values, things that are important to you and ensures that you're able to achieve all of those things within your means. So when you have those values laid out in front of you, that budget is reflective of your passions, your wants, your needs, who you are. It's more than just numbers on a page. It really is who you are and how you can achieve those goals um, and, and those values. So Andrew, you did a fan 
fantastic. Thank you so much. Job. <laughs> Everybody was super engaged. You changed the world with your insight and your knowledge and your refreshing um, delivery. And we thank you so much. Thank you very much. For tonight. Of course. That's and as I'm you can for. see, you can come. We have small talk for big changes. You can see that. Um, you can go to patuckle.org and listen to Andrew and I talk about financial health. You can mm -hmm. go to Spring Fork. You can go to Balance. We're here to support your financial health your entire life. So thank you so much for coming. And we will see you next week. Right, Andrew? Ooh, the week Great after job. next week. Goodbye, January 24th. Everybody. We'll see you guys then. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.